So new Intel CPU, new NUC. We are talking about Raptor Canyon, which now comes in a bigger 13.9 liter chassis. This is the previous one from the 12th gen era. In fact, they didn't even change the design from 11th gen. It's been the same for two years, but it seems like they're getting a little bit bigger every year. The benefit to that is you get more room to work with when you put your hands in this case. And on top of that, it just provides better cooling. I think Intel's starting to realize that their CPUs right now are running a bit too hot. Same with AMDs. And with GPUs getting ridiculously massive, like you have to have the space to house these things. Now, granted, these Intel NUCs do come in bare bone kits and they're not cheap. And, uh, you know, obviously you could build a mini ITX case for relatively cheaper, but there's just something special about these things, you know, like the engineering, the design, the form factor, the ease of use is very, very attractive. Now, before I do performance and benchmarks and all that kind of stuff, let's do a teardown and talk about what you get when you purchase one of these kits. This is what to expect. You're gonna get a build that looks exactly like this. You're gonna have air vents at the top. You have your front IO. So you have your power button, USB type C, gen two, and you have two more USB-A ports, these are 3.2 Gen 1. And of course you have a headphone jack. And then on the left and right side, you have these grills. This grill here and on the other side is obviously for airflow since this is using air cooling. Now on the back, you get a quite a bit of IO. So you get six USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two Thunderbolt 4 ports. You have two RJ45 jacks. One of them is 10 gigabits and the other one is 2.5, your audio ports, and then you have your connectors for your Wi-Fi antennas, which come with full-size chopsticks. And then of course, on the bottom, I have a GPU, which happens to be an RTX 3080 Ti. Now, because this is a bigger case, this is gonna be a bit easier to open up than the previous 12th gen model. So the way you start it off is on the back here. This is a thumb screw, or you could use a screwdriver to obviously open it up. And then what you do is, once it's loose, you kind of just pry this upwards and then the entire vent comes off the case. Now to get to the CPU and all that kind of stuff, you have to remove a few screws. So you take off this one right here and then you have another one back here. And then there's one more screw on the back of the case that you want to remove. But this is what the internals look like when you take off that grill. You have your three slot GPU up to 313 millimeters. And of course you have that NUC component which houses your CPU and RAM. Now if you wanna take out the NUC component, all you have to do is disconnect the USB header over here. And then there's a little lever over here, okay? That unlocks this component. And then what you do is you kinda of like lift it up like you would like a, a GPU for example. Just twist it a little bit. And then boom, you have the nut component outside of the computer. And this is where it connects. Like there's just a little slot here on the bottom where that whole component connects. You even have a full size power supply or not a full size power supply, a small form factor power supply that's 750 watts. This is 80 plus gold. So it's a very efficient power supply. All your cables are already connected in here so that you can connect it to the daughter board. And then you have a 120 millimeter fan on the back to house, help cool the entire device. In fact, there's actually two 120 millimeter fans on the back. And of course, your PSU fan is there as well. You have two slots for RAM up to 64 gigabytes. This is DDR5 swappable Wi-Fi 6E. This is your main fan to cool the CPU. You have your heat spreader to the left-hand side. And then if you wanna upgrade the storage, there's three slots on the back. So each of these slots over here, one, two, and three, can be used to house an M2 NVMe SSD. Now upgrading the GPU is quite easy. You just take off the bottom bracket, which doesn't require any unscrewing. You open up this little section over here so you can get access to the screws. And then you unscrew all of them, obviously. Unplug the power cables. And then you have to unscrew back here as well. So what happens is when you install a GPU, there's a little bracket so that the GPU stays secure to the side of the case so that it doesn't move around. Now, just like any other motherboard, there's a little lever for where the GPU goes on the PCIe slot. So make sure you press that. And then afterwards, you can pull it out. But before you do that, I totally forgot to take the screw off on this side and on this side because I don't have clear access to removing the GPU from the case. So don't be like me, remove those screws and this thing comes off. And then of course you have clear access to the GPU and you can take it outside of the case. Like look at the size of this thing, right? This is a full size RTX 3080 Ti inside of a chassis this small. You can also see on the back here is where you'd screw in the GPU bracket. 
so that when you put it back in the case, you can screw it to the side of where the fan is being housed. This way it'll keep it nice and secure. And to put everything back, it's just like Lego. Whatever you took out, make sure you make a mental note where it was and screw everything back in and make sure all the cables are plugged. Now when you build the PC, usually you have a push-pull system. So you have airflow coming in from the front and then it's being pushed out through the back. In this situation, it's doing it from the side. So you have air coming in one side, and then you have air coming out to the other. So keep the area open if you want the best cooling. In terms of performance, great. You know, like this is using the exact same i9 13900K, 125 watt unlocked processor that you'd buy from Amazon or Newegg or any of your favorite stores. Boosts up to 5.8 gigahertz. It has eight performance cores, 60 efficiency cores. There's no difference. The only difference is the PL2 power limit. This can only go up to 250 watts, where my desktop PC can boost up to 350 watts and sustain it for a lot longer. It's not the processor that's doing that, it's the main board that has certain control limits in order to keep this thing cool and obviously quiet. Now all the tests I've done in this video were with max performance enabled in the BIOS, and I switched the fan profile from balanced to cool, which obviously gives the best cooling. And look, when it comes to single core clock speeds, there is no difference compared to my main desktop computer. So if you're gaming at 1080p, you're not gonna see a performance difference. The only thing that changes is when you're doing long sustained multi workloads. So multi-core clock speeds are gonna be faster on my custom build PC. Granted, the cooling is also better. Like I have a 360 millimeter AIO installed on it so it can sustain those high power limits a lot longer than this guy. In fact, this only boosts for a short period of time before it has to go down because it wants to keep the system quiet and obviously it wants to keep it as cool as possible. If we're talking strictly fan noise at its loudest, I'm measuring about 48 to 50 decibels, which is relatively quieter than a gaming laptop. Like gaming laptops usually hover around 55 decibels, sometimes even 60. And once you pass that 50 decibel part, every decibel feels really loud so keeping it below 50 is really really good and obviously if you're just doing like general stuff on your computer you're not going to hear the fans the fans don't really kick on until you're doing something super intensive so i'm not exactly sure what the bare bone kit is going to cost i will place that in the description down below but i'm assuming it's going to be more expensive than buying your own case and building it yourself but here's the thing i still think this is good for someone who's building their first computer it's very easy to do it's foolproof, right? And it's a good first step, as long as you don't mind spending a tiny bit more. And I just love the look of this. It's just like simple, clean, and still provides very good performance. I've never had issues with this during my testing, no games crashed, everything just worked. But if you're cost conscious, obviously build your own PC. You're gonna save some money and you can push it as hard as you want, depending on the type of cooling you're putting inside of it. Anyways, if you have any more questions about it, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.